Thanks everyone for attending this tutorial. My name is Bobak Salini. I'm an assistant professor at UC San Diego, and I present this tutorial together with Ramila Prahan, Aditya Lahiri, and Sayam Galhotra. This tutorial overviews recent exciting and rapidly evolving research on explainable AI and discusses opportunities for data management community in this space. But before getting into that, let me spend a little bit of time introducing my lab at UCSD. At UCSD, I'm the director of the Responsible Data Management and Analysis Lab at the Data Science Department. In our lab, we develop principal methods to answer fundamental uh, urgent questions in data science. Namely, how can we make sure that the conclusions we make out of the data science pipeline are fair, unbiased, valid, reliable, and accurate? How can we make sure that the whole process is transparent and explainable so that our conclusions become indisputable? Such so challenges are now widely referred to as responsible data science. The goal of my research is to find principal way to address some of these challenges. In our group, we look into all the stages in the data science pipeline to address issues related to responsible data science. There are lots of issues that can happen throughout the data science pipeline that could potentially lead to invalid, faulty, and discriminative decisions. In most cases, the issue is with the pre-existing bias in data. And our work in the context of data debiasing addresses these challenges by developing data cleaning methods to remove population developed data errors and data biases from data. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with data, but users simply ask, ask questions that are not suitable for decision-making. Our work in the context of decision-making systems help users to fix their queries and avoid wrong conclusions. In addition to data management, my research is grounded in causal inference since I believe causal inference can provide a principal way uh, for modeling various types of data biases. But we also contribute to causal inference itself by developing methods for causal inference from complex relational data. Finally, we believe generating explanations is crucial for responsible data science and for understanding data and algorithms. And we made several contributions in this space that we are going to cover, cover some of them uh, today in this tutorial. Now let's get right into it. And let's start with the question that why do we care about explanations and machine learning and AI? Today, algorithmic decision-making is increasingly being used for making consequential decisions in the context of higher loan applications, healthcare and justice systems, and have been shown to be highly accurate for many of these applications. However, there is a growing concern over the transparency of these models since they are often non-intuitive and hard to interpret either because they are highly complex or because of the proprietary nature of their learning algorithms. So what is explainable AI? Explainable AI explores and investigates methods to produce or complement AI models to make the outcome of the algorithms and their internal decision making process understandable by human. It is a powerful tool in answering how, critical how and why questions about decisions made by algorithmic systems. In spite of what it sounds like, explainable AI is actually not a new topic. Over three and four decades ago, there has been a burst of work in explanations in the context of expert systems, where the main goal was to justify the result of reasoning process of, of, processes of expert systems and increasing trust uh, in their results. Pretty much the same goals as contemporary methods in explainable AI today. Perhaps our community is more familiar with logic-based framework for explanations and diagnosis based on the early works of Ray Writer in the context of abductive reasoning and model-based diagnosis, in which the goal was to find explanation for anomalous systems behavior and recommend repair actions to mitigate them. As a matter of fact, many contemporary methods uh, for explainable AI borrow idea, ideas from model-based diagnosis. Now, uh, let's be more concrete about applications of explainable AI today. The first and foremost applications is to be able to answer normative questions about an AI system and to be able to identify and mitigate sources of bias and discrimination in algorithmic systems. 
And a common way to do so is to use explanations to ensure that the decisions made by an algorithm is invariant and independent of sensitive attributes such as race and gender, and etc. However, there is no consensus of what this invariance means and how it should be computationally captured. And since you are here, you probably came across to articles that state some form of discrimination by AI or algorithmic systems, for instance, in the context of justice system and healthcare. The second objective is building trust among different stakeholders by justifying the decisions made by algorithms to clients and end users and providing them with actionable insights, insights to change the result of algorithmic systems in future, which is sometimes called as algorithmic recourse. This is, for instance, crucial for sensitive applications of AI in banking and finance and critical systems such as space and satellite systems and in the context of healthcare. Not only that, generating explanations is also now mandated by law. For example, the European Union GDPR empowers individual with the right to demand and explanations of how an AI system made the decisions that affect them. There are laws and bills in place across different countries and jurisdictions that require every organization that uses some form of AI in uh, making decisions uh, to explain how they generate particular outputs. So explainable AI is also important to ensure compliance with the law. And last but not least, explainable AI tools can also help with data validation and debugging ML models that are trained on existing data sets that are often polluted with various sources of data biases. This can be done by means of quantifying the contributions of each feature to the final decision. With the help of it, we can debunk our models and observe how it predicted an observation in a certain way. There is actually a NURBS workshop now dedicated to this particular topic. Okay, now discuss how explainability can be achieved. Explainability can be achieved in two forms. First option is to develop algorithmic systems in which one criteria taken into account during the training is how well a human could understand the decisions made by the algorithm in the given context. This is often called interpretability or intrinsic explainability of machine learning models. For example, you can think of decision trees, linear regression, uh, if then else rules that clearly indicate how we reach a certain decision as interpretable models. The second option would be to generate explanations for decisions made by an algorithm when the algorithm is analyzed after the fact. For instance, by approximating a complicated black box model uh, with a simple interpretable surrogate model, as we're going to discuss later today. Post hoc explanation methods can be further categorized based on whether they are model agnostic or whether model is specific, meaning that uh, the method is developed for a particular machine learning model. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on post hoc explanations that are model agnostic, that are applicable to any black box proprietary algorithm and are more relevant to the data management community. Existing work uh, in this space include approaches based on feature importance that attribute the decisions of an algorithm to its input features. Uh, today, we are going to cover uh, two famous feature attribution methods, namely a line, which uses linear approximations of a complex machine learning model um, to, uh, for feature attributions, and SHAP, which is, which is based on a game theoretic notion of Shapley value. Um, then we're going to discuss counterfactual explanations that are another class of explanation that describe the smallest change, changes to the input features required for changing the result of prediction algorithms. They're closely related to the notion of algorithmic recourse as we are going to see uh, later today. Just to refresh your mind, algorithmic risk recourse is, a, is the ability uh, to change the result of algorithm by changing, uh, changing the input features. Then we're going to argue that most of the uh, feature attribution approaches primarily focus on correlation between the input features and the outcome variable. And therefore they can lead to highly misleading conclusions um, that are not appropriate for reasoning about bias, discrimination, and for recommending algorithmic recourse. 
recommending reliable algorithmic recourse. Therefore, they fail to uh, fulfill the first two objectives of explainable AI as we discussed today. Many of these shortcomings uh, can be actually resolved by incorporating causal background knowledge into these systems that lead us to, leads us to causal approaches to explainability that we are going to cover in depth today. Um, for instance, we're going to cover Lewis, which is a system developed uh, in my group uh, that enable counterfactual explainability. Then we are going to discuss that feature-based explanations, either causal or non-causal, it doesn't matter, that fall short in generating diagnostic explanations that enable machine learning developers and practitioners to trace unexpected discriminatory and biased algorithmic behavior all the way back to their training data, which is often the main culprit and the source of bias. Hence, they fail to satisfy the third objective of explainable AI, which is debugging machine learning model. Today, we are going to talk about, we're going to discuss database explanations that meant to address this shortcoming by identifying subset of training data that are responsible for unexpected behavior of a machine learning model. We are going to cover a suite of techniques for generating uh, such explanations, including Goofer, which is a system developed at my group for generating database explanations. What I hope you get from this tutorial is actually summarized in this slide. I hope it can convince you that generating explanations using feature attribution methods and in general post hoc explainability is as complex as the problem of causal inference from observational data, in which instead of studying causes of an outcome generated by a complex a stochastic process in nature, the goal is to study causes of an outcome generated by a complex machine learning algorithm. And as we know, quantifying causal responsibility is a challenging problem in general. As a matter of fact, we still don't have a formal notion of causal, causal responsibility that can capture all nuances in human conception of causation. We are going to see that existing methods in this space are essentially boiled down to discovering associational and causal patterns in data. And the difference between different explainability methods that we are going to discuss today is between how they quantify this is statistical or causal correlations. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not claiming that these methods are not useful, but they need to be used with care and within the right context. Otherwise, they can create more harm than good, in my personal view. After this tutorial, I hope. I hope you acknowledge that database explainability for generating explanation based on training data essentially solves the all good incremental view maintenance and delete propagation problem in databases, in which instead of a query, we have a complex iterative learning algorithm. I hope we can convince you that these classes of explanations are crucial for data validation, for data cleaning, and for debugging machine learning models. And then, uh, I hope we can convince you that data management community is well positioned to address challenges in generating, in, in developing methods for efficient generation of such explanation, which is a very challenging problem. This tutorial consists of three parts. In the first part, uh, Aditya is going to tell us about feature-based explanations. He's going to cover approaches uh, such as line and SHAP uh, and discuss their pros and cons. Then Siam is going to tell us about um, contrafactual and causal explainability approaches. And finally, Romula is going to discuss database explanations and opportunities for the database, for the data management community in this space.